What is a fallacy? A fallacy is an error in reasoning or a mistaken belief. More narrowly, a fallacy is an error in reasoning that can be identified and named. Fallacies are divided up into two different categories known as formal and informal fallacies. In formal fallacies, an argument can be identified to be fallacious based entirely on its form alone. In other words, we do not need to know anything about the facts or information contained within the premises of an argument to know that it is fallacious. To see why this is the case, consider the following argument that commits a formal fallacy. If I took out the trash, then my mom is happy. My mom is happy, therefore I took out the trash. Why do the premises in this argument fail to support the conclusion? The answer is that it has a bad inference or form. The mere fact that my mom is happy does not mean I took out the trash. After all, she could be happy because she is on vacation or listening to beach music. This formal fallacy is known as affirming the consequent, which has the form of if A, then B, B, therefore A. It does not matter what A and B represent. No matter what, this kind of argument will always be fallacious because it has a bad form or inference. By contrast, informal fallacies are mistakes made in the everyday use of language. In other words, we must look at the information or facts presented to know if an informal fallacy has been committed. Informal fallacies can be divided up into four different categories as illustrated by Irving Copey in Carl Cohen's Introduction to Logic textbook. Fallacies of relevance. Fallacies of relevance occur when the premises of an argument are irrelevant to the truth or falsity of the conclusion. Fallacies of defective induction. Fallacies of a defective induction occur when a conclusion of an argument is supported by weak or unreliable evidence. Fallacies of presumption. Fallacies of presumption occur when the conclusion is assumed in one of the premises of an argument. Fallacies of ambiguity. Fallacies of ambiguity occur when the meaning of words in the premises of an argument shifts to a different meaning in another part of the argument. In this video, I will explain six different fallacies of relevance. These include the appeal to the populace, the appeal to emotion, the red herring, the straw man, the attack on the person, and missing the point. The appeal to the populace. The appeal to the populace claims that a claim is true simply because it is widely believed or accepted by others. Here are some examples. God must exist because most people believe that he exists. Okay, that might be true that most people believe in God, but the mere fact that most people believe in God does not mean that he actually exists. I mean, after all, uh, people used to believe that the earth was flat or the center of the universe, but of course through science an empirical study we found that was not the case. So the mere fact that most people believe something does not mean it's in fact the case. Uh, drugs should be illegal because virtually everybody agrees these substances should be illegal. I mean most people used to believe that alcohol should be illegal. That's why we had prohibition for example. But uh, again I think no one would say that prohibition was the correct policy that alcohol should have been illegal so again the fact that most people believe in something is not a reason to believe it's true uh, everybody agrees that you should drive a sports car since everybody agrees with the claim that you should drive a sports car you should buy one instead of that van that will help you be able to seat all your children uh, again like the fact that most people are driving a sports car doesn't mean that you should uh, so this is, this is a poor line of argument, as one can see. Okay, the appeal to emotion. The appeal to emotion claims that a conclusion must be true or false because it elicits a positive or a negative emotion in someone. Okay, here's some examples. I must not have cancer because if I did, that would be very sad. Now, it is in very, it's very sad to have cancer, no doubt. But, like, the fact that it's very sad doesn't mean you don't have it. So this is a poor argument. Uh, climate change cannot be real because if it was real, I might have to get rid of my beachfront property because of rising sea levels. Well, that might be the case, but you know, 
the fact that that'd be a sad thing for you to do doesn't mean that climate change is not part of reality. Okay, here's the last example. There's no way I have a moral obligation to donate 30% of my income to Oxfam to help children because if I did have this moral obligation, I'd be seriously inconvenienced. Well, morality might be very demanding and you might indeed have that obligation. The fact that you'd be seriously inconvenienced by it or, you know, you don't like the way that sounds, it doesn't mean that's not true. So this is not a convincing argument. Okay, here's a fallacy that comes up a lot in debates that I do. The red herring fallacy. The red herring fallacy occurs when one's opponent brings up a point that is irrelevant to the issue at hand. Okay, here's some examples. The U.S. should adopt a universal health care policy because it is cheaper than our current health care system. But what about all the starving children in Africa? Shouldn't we take care of them? Now, it might indeed be the case that we should take care of all the starving children that are in Africa, but this is completely irrelevant to the claim made by the proponent of universal health care. So it fails to address the issue. The, uh, factory farming animals is immoral because it causes animals gratuitous suffering. That might be true, but free range animals are treated humanely. Again, it might indeed be the case that hum free range animals are treated more humanely than factory farm animals, but it's completely irrelevant to the truth or falsity of the claim originally made, namely that factory farming causes animals gratuitous suffering. So again, this, this is not really addressing the, the argument. Okay, here's the last example. The U.S. should stop invading other countries because it is unjust. Well, don't you support the troops? Now again, so one can support the troops and yet also think that the U.S. wars that are going on are unjust. And it's completely irrelevant of whether or not I support the troops or you support the troops or whatever. Like, this does not address the argument at hand. Okay, the straw man fallacy. A straw man fallacy is a distortion of an argument and an attack on the distortion. Okay, here's some examples. The U.S. should cut military spending by 50% so we could have more money to spend on infrastructure. You must be anti-military if you believe this. Now, this is not at all true. You can be pro-military and yet also think that we should cut military budgets substantially. This doesn't mean you're anti-military. In fact, as far as I understand it, uh, the U.S. would still have the biggest military in the world even if we cut our budget by 50%. So that's, this is hardly anti-military. Again, this is, a, this is a straw man argument. Abortion should be illegal because it violates the fetus's right to life. I can't believe you are arguing that human fetuses should have all the same rights as an adult human being. Now, the, per, the opponent of abortion is not arguing that fetuses should have all the same rights as adult humans. He's just arguing that fetuses have a right to life. That's the only right he's um, arguing that they have. So this is a straw man. I want the U.S. to enact a policy of a universal basic income. Well, you must want the U.S. to become like communist Russia. Now. Again, the fact that someone supports a universal income does not mean they want the U.S. to become like communist Russia. You might be pro-universal basic income and yet think the economy should be capitalist in other areas. So this is clearly just a straw man. Okay, argument ad hominem. The ad hominem fallacy occurs when one dismisses an argument because of the character of the person making the argument, his association with bad people, or his circumstances. So he, we have the argument ad hominem abusive. Uh, one version of the ad hominem fallacy is the argument against the person. This fallacy claims that we are justified in rejecting an argument because the person putting forth the argument is a bad person or a hypocrite. Um, here's some examples of this. You should vote for Elizabeth because her policies would benefit the American people. Well, Elizabeth's policies must be harmful to the American people because she's a lesbian. Now, the fact that Elizabeth is a lesbian does not at all mean that her policies are 
going to have bad consequences for the American people. This is just silly. And it also fails to just address the the argument at hand. So uh, this is just a bad argument. Okay, Donald Trump said he is going to cease the United States occupation in Iraq. This policy would be good for America because it would get our troops out of an unnecessary war. This policy by Donald Trump should be rejected because he is a racist. Now, the, whether or not Donald Trump is a racist is irrelevant to the structure of this argument. Uh, so this can't be uh, a reason to reject the argument at hand. You've got to actually look at the content or the consequences of the policy in order to find out whether or not it should be accepted or rejected. We shouldn't ban Muslims from coming to the United States because that would be unjust discrimination. You're only arguing this because you're a Muslim, therefore your argument is unsound. Now whether or not the person making this argument is a Muslim is irrelevant to the logical structure and content of this argument. So this is no basis for rejecting the argument at hand. Okay. Argument ad hominem circumstantial. Another version of the ad hominem fallacy is circumstantial. This is where we dismiss an argument because of someone's personal circumstances or that person's affiliation with some group. Here are some examples. White people owe black people reparations or financial compensation for our enslavement in the past. You're only saying this because you're black, therefore your argument is unsound. Now, the fact that the person making this argument is black is irrelevant to whether or not we should um, give black people reparations for being enslaved in the past. So this is just not a, a good way to dismiss one's argument. Uh, adjunct professors are exploited by universities since they are not paid much for teaching classes. The government should make universities pay them more. You're only saying this because you're an adjunct professor, therefore your argument is unsound. Now, whether the person making this argument is an adjunct has nothing to do with whether or not this is a good argument. So this can't be a reason to reject the original argument at hand. Okay. Moral values are objective since the denial of this claim leads to intellectual or epistemological nihilism. You're only saying this because you want to prove that euthanasia is immoral, therefore your argument is unsound. Now, again, this is no basis for rejecting an argument. You've got to actually look at the structure of the argument and determine whether or not it's persuasive. Don't look at the person, look at the argument. Argument ad hominem. Tu quo qui. Another version of the ad hominem fallacy is the tu quo qui. This is where we reject an argument on grounds that the speaker is just as bad as his opponent, or just as guilty of whatever it is he complained about. Basically, it can be translated as, look who's talking. Okay, here are some examples. Your argument is unsound because it commits a logical fallacy. Oh yeah? Well, you committed a logical fallacy earlier in our conversation. Now, the fact that this person, in fact, committed a logical fallacy earlier is irrelevant to whether or not you committed a logical fallacy. So this is completely irrelevant. Uh, well, it's completely irrelevant whether or not your opponent actually committed a logical fallacy earlier. That doesn't address his criticism of you, right? So this isn't a, a good reply to someone's argument. Son, you shouldn't smoke cigarettes because they are bad for your health. But dad, you smoke three packs of cigarettes a day. Therefore, your argument against the unhealthiness of cigarettes is unsound. Now, Again, the fact that one engages in behavior that is no worse than the criticism that was launched against that person does not mean that's grounds for rejecting their argument. So this reply is not helpful. We should be vegans and stop killing animals for food because they feel pain. This argument fails because vegans hypocritically kill plants that also feel pain. Now, it might indeed be the case that vegans are hypocrites because they kill plants, but this does nothing to disprove the argument that was originally put forward, namely that we should stop killing animals because they feel pain. 
So you've got to look for some other reason to reject this argument. You can't just respond with, oh, they're hypocritical and they don't, you know, practice what they preach or whatever. So, yeah. Argument ad hominem, poisoning the well. Poisoning the well is another form of the ad hominem fallacy. This fallacy occurs when someone tries to discredit the argument put forth by their opponent by questioning their intelligence or moral character. Okay, here are some examples. We should legalize prostitution because it is a victimless act. Before I respond to my opponent's argument, I would like everybody to know that he was in prison for five years for armed robbery. Now, whether or not this person was in prison for five years for armed robbery is irrelevant to whether or not his argument for prostitution is a good one or not. Um, it's also just trying to make him look bad in front of the audience that they're arguing in front of. So this is just poisoning the well. This is just like a, a cheap shot. Okay. We should stop mass immigration to the U.S. because it will threaten the survival of America's culture and values. I hope everybody knows that my opponent is a Trump supporter and hates minorities. Okay, this is, again, irrelevant to the truth or falsity of the argument that was originally made. And even if it was the case that this person is a Trump supporter and hates minorities, it would do nothing to demonstrate that this argument he put forth is unsound. Uh, so this is not a good reply to the argument at hand. Okay. I would like to give my opponent extra time to make his case after I present my arguments. I know he's going to need it because his arguments are going to be completely unconvincing. Now, in this case, the person is being uncharitable and just trying to make his opponent look bad um, before he even gets going. So he's, and by doing this, he's poisoning the well. He's making uh, rational discourse more difficult because of the way he's going about this debate. So this is not a strategy one should employ when trying to debate a topic. Okay, missing the point. The last fallacy of relevance I will explain is the missing the point fallacy. This fallacy occurs when one's reasoning is confused because they do not fully recognize or grasp the argument that was presented to them or if the premises of an argument do not support the conclusion. It is also known as a mistaken refutation. Okay, here's some examples. It's morally permissible for members of the Animal Liberation Front to save animals from laboratories because torturing animals for the advancement of scientific knowledge is unjust. And the person replies, the Animal Liberation Front saving animals from laboratories is wrong because these actions are illegal. Okay. This argument is unsound. Just because something is illegal does not make it wrong. It was illegal to hide Jews from the Nazis, but it was morally permissible. And then the person finally responds, That is a false comparison. The human holocaust was unjust, but animal experimentation is not. Now, this person has completely failed to respond to the argument at hand. They, and, they, and instead, they've now given a new argument to respond to the argument that was made. So they, uh, they have essentially abandoned the original justification they gave earlier, namely that um, saving animals from laboratories is wrong because it's illegal. So they seem to agree now that yeah, just because something's illegal doesn't mean it's, it's immoral. Okay, heroin use is on the rise. To combat this problem, we should start putting all heroin users to death. Now this simply just does not follow from the original claim that heroin use is on the rise. I mean, even if you think that we should uh, not allow people to use heroin, and it should be a punishable act, uh, there are other means you could use to uh, combat this problem. And so you don't need to put people to death. You could just... Um, treat it as like a medical condition rather than throwing them in prison. So yeah, this is not a good argument. You'll notice that uh, missing the point also is similar to the non sequitur fallacy where it simply means it, it doesn't follow from the premises. So 
The last example is this. Many Catholic priests have been convicted of sexual abuse of minors. Therefore, all Catholic priests are sexual predators. Now, this is also a hasty generalization fallacy. Um, you're taking a small sample size and then generalizing to a whole entire group uh, and saying that they have this property or they're guilty of this act or whatever. So this, um, the conclusion drawn from this argument is simply just doesn't follow validly. So the conclusion of this argument simply just doesn't follow uh, from the claim of this argument and therefore it's it's not persuasive okay so that concludes my explanation of the fallacies of relevance in the next video I will explain fallacies of defective induction